So as I told you, the goal today is to uh, end up doing something like this, uh, but we will start uh, with just defining the wall, okay? Um, but uh, I want to uh, follow the Benson Wood This is the roof detail, and I'm going to work uh, with the uh, wall detail. And I'm going to use this tectonics uh, building closure uh, because here we have some walls. Okay, so I told you that uh, we have this. It's like a slice of the building, but it's not clear. The connection between the roof and the wall, it's not clear because they have a system um, and it's not clear how they, they do it here. Uh, but what we can do is to uh, work with this kind of, uh, of walls. Okay, so here we have um, the R21 or 31, uh, uh, the R35 or uh, 45, and here we have uh, the R53. Okay, so we, are, we have different uh, specifications. The difference between 35 and 45 it's because uh, this B, which is the uh, service layer, uh, this B, this cavity, it can be air or it can be filled with thermal insulation. So if we fill this uh, with thermal insulation, um, it has uh, two and a half inches. Okay. If we fill this with thermal insulation, then we get R45. If we don't fill it with thermal insulation, we will get R35. So that's the difference between this. This R53, it's because we they have a, a thicker uh, cellulose layer, this D. It's a structural framing and insulation uh, cellulose. And then this B is the surface layer, uh, mechanical and structural connections, uh, potential R value with, with additional insulation. Okay, so if we have this and this, it's uh, three and a half inches, and the other one was two and a half inches. Okay, so basically uh, we get a uh, higher R value by uh, increasing the thickness of the cellulose, by increasing the thickness of that uh, uh, cavity or that they call it um, surface layer, uh, because we don't want to uh, pierce uh, the wall itself. So we have a lot of cables that will be uh, pipes for hot or cold water. So they run uh, through this cavity here. Um, so we don't perforate or we don't use a wall uh, when. Uh, so there's a uh, main structural uh, rafters like that. Uh, between those rafters, uh, we have the cellulose. Okay, so uh, we have the cellulose layer here. And uh, what they do, uh, then they have a board. So this is the OSB board. And then here, uh, they have another uh, rafter, which is very small one. It's not a structure. Uh, and they Uh, they have this cavity, and on this cavity, they can perforate uh, this raptor, and then they can uh, move with uh, electricity, wires, or uh, pipes, or whatever. So in section is uh, like this, we have the, the raptor itself. This is the main uh, thermal insulation uh, made of cellulose. Then uh, they have the boards. The board indoors, the board outdoors, and then they have this uh, second uh, rafter, and they can perforate this rafter so that if there is a pipe or whatever, uh, they can run the pipe here. Okay, and finally, uh, here we have the interior finish. It can be gypsum or it can be uh, plywood or whatever. Okay, and then uh, this part can be uh, filled with uh, thermal insulation. So if we have a wire or, or we have uh, pipes, uh, we can interrupt the, the thermal insulation. 
but most of the time we have thermal dissipation. Okay, so if we want to, because the, the air barriers and the vapor barriers are always uh, here, are in the main structural element. Okay, so here we can have the vapor or the air barriers. So if we pierce this air barrier and vapor barrier, because we need a connection or wire or whatever, uh, we destroy uh, the, the air tightness of this building. So everything that has to be pierced or has to be connected, because uh, we might need to have a wire here and then we will have a socket. Okay, so all these should be done in this internal layer, not in the main uh, layer. So that's uh, why they have this uh, secondary uh, rafters. They are not structural. They are not uh, two by whatever. So they are something very thin. And uh, on these rafters, uh, we can uh, nail the, the interior finish. Okay, so that's another uh, panel made of plywood or whatever, and it's nailed on those uh, second regular. So this is how it works, and this is what we are going to do here. So we're going to use that R53, which apparently is the best one. Uh, so we are going to do this in 3D. In 2D, it's quite easy, and uh, where I'm not going to do it, but uh, you have to prepare another sheet uh, with uh, walls. You did the, or some of you did it uh, with the roof. Uh, you remember that we have this uh, sheet here with the numbers and all the text. So you will have to do the same for the walls, but I'm not going to do the, the 2D uh, detail, only the 3D one. So let's do it. Um, well, first, I think I'm going to use, uh, or I'm going to start uh, with a plan view with a floor, uh, level one, for example. Uh, I don't know the levels that I have here. If I go to the east elevation, I just have one level. Okay, um, so I'm going to copy this one. here. Uh, so let's call this, it's a little weird. So I, uh, I have level negative nine and then a uh, level zero. Uh, okay, okay, because I, start, I started here by default because when I did the roof, I, I didn't think about levels. But anyway, uh, we have one level and uh, another level. Uh, so we are going to start with this one. It's a uh, level negative nine. Sometimes that happens. You can see here in the floor plan, you don't see that level. Uh, so if you go to view, uh, plan views, floor plan, here you have level negative one, okay? So you can click on it. And here we have that level, level negative one. And uh, what's first? I'm going to create a wall that goes from level negative one to level one. Uh, so the first thing I'm going, I'm going to do, uh, we can use a component model in place, but I'm going to use structure and I'm going to use a, a column. Uh, remember that here we have different, uh, oh, we don't have even uh, columns here. Okay, if you want to insert uh, columns uh, from one uh, file to another one, uh, you can always uh, select uh, columns and beams, uh, control C, copy, and then here we can paste it. And uh, now if we go back to structure uh, columns, uh, we should find, we don't. Is it in architectural column? No, we don't. Okay. So it doesn't matter. I'm going to go to uh, insert. A load family. Uh, we have here structural columns. Uh, we have wood and uh, we have timber uh, column. Uh, glue laminated, 
In this case, uh, we're not using the glue laminated column that we used for the other example. Uh, we're going to use the timber column. I don't know the difference between this dimension lumber column and this timber column. Um, okay, let's select these two and uh, open. Oh, and here uh, you see that we have a lot of uh, types. Uh, we can select all of them and load them, but I don't recommend you do that. It's better to change the, the type uh, to create the, uh, the thickness or the, 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 the size that we want. So here uh, we have uh, inches, it's uh, eight by 20, eight by 22. So let's select this eight by 24. Okay, let me see this. So the thickness of all this layer D is five and uh, a half inch. No, it's um, 11 uh, one quarter, but that includes layer E. So let's do this like a 10 inch uh, column or a 10 inch uh, rafter and it's filled with cellulose here. So let's make this 10 inches. Uh, do we have something uh, with 10 inches here? Uh, we have this uh, one and nine and a half. Okay, uh, we're going to change the, the material, but select this one, uh, click OK. And now in these structural columns, now the, uh, we have this, the timber column, 10 by 22, and we have this uh, dimension lumber, uh, four by four. Okay, any of those uh, work. So I'm going to select this um, 10 by 22, but I'm going to edit type, I'm going to duplicate. And what is the, the specification for this detail? Uh, you see that we have here uh, F um, I, Let's look at the specifications of this. Uh, the structural framing and insulation. Um, okay, so it's, uh, we have joists, but this is D. Tense back cellulose, joist, but that's the floor. I want the C. Rain screen, interior, structural service layer to uh, at 24 inches. Okay, so uh, they have the, their own system. So they are not using the traditional two by six inch rafter uh, and the distance is 16 inches. So they have uh, two inches and the rafters are, according to this, they should be like a, a 10 inch rafter. So that's what we are going to do. Uh, we are going to make the two by 10 a rafter. Okay. And now uh, this is two and this is 10 inches. We apply. Okay. So now we have this uh, timber column to a uh, two by 10 and we can place it uh, here. Where is it? Where is it in the east elevation? Uh, perfect. Uh, we It's uh, on level negative nine and it has this uh, level offset. So the top level has to be level nine and the offset has to be zero. There you go. And I don't know what this is, but I'm going to get rid of it. So that's my uh, rafter, okay? So it's a uh, two by 10, two inches by 10 inches. And it goes from a uh, level uh, negative nine up to level zero. So uh, the distance between rafters is two feet. 
um, in this system. So I'm going to select this, I'm going to copy, and I select the middle point, and I'm going to uh, fit away and to fit. And let's, uh, okay, four, I think will be enough. So that's what we have. We have raptors and the distance between raptors is uh, two feet. Um, then what else? Uh, this is filled with cellulose. Okay, so there's a cellulose uh, between raptors. Uh, how can we do it? Mm, I will try the component model in place. So in the component model in place, uh, do we have something here? Um, okay, I'm going to use walls because we are working with walls. And uh, I'm going to use extrusion. So I will select the rectangle. I have to set a work plane. So the work plane, uh, I will set level negative 10. And now rectangle. I will select this point and this point. Click OK. And now I can move it up. OK. Um, why am I moving it here? Because I'm going to show a lot of layers. So I'm going to show layers indoors, and I'm going to show layers uh, outdoors. So if this is indoors and that's out outdoors, I think it will work uh, well. Uh, so let's uh, finish. And what is that material? I can edit in place, uh, select this material by category. So we don't have any material here. Uh, we don't have cellulose. But uh, here you see that we have cellulose field in this uh, search that I have here. Okay, so it's not in the default materials. But if I type cellulose, I can uh, click here and I can upload a cellulose to the default list of material. So I select this one, I apply, okay. And now this material is cellulose field. Is it great? Uh, well, well, not great, okay. Uh, if we have time, uh, we will, but the cellulose, some, uh, cellulose is something grayish. I think we have some examples here. No, we don't, but if we uh, go to Benton Wood. Wall details. Uh, yep, this is the cellulose. Okay, so here you see that they are uh, preparing, I think this is a roof, but we have the, the rafters and the roof, we call it rafters. The vertical are stats, but anyway. Uh, and then they fill this with this uh, cellulose, which is that grayish stuff, okay? Uh, but it's the same that they use for, for walls, but this is the cellulose. Anyway, it's something grayish, and uh, this is it. You see that when we have the board uh, out, outdoors, they have this rain screen, they call it that rain screen. So those are small uh, horizontal elements nailed to the main uh, vertical elements of, uh, of this, okay. So that's what we what we are going to do outdoors, um, and this is what we are going to do indoors. Indoors, they have the wall uh, with the board here. Uh, this green stuff probably is the vapor barrier, and then they have these small uh, rafters or studs, and then we attach or we nail here the interior finish, which, which is this purple thing that we have here. Okay. Uh, and this layer is layer. Uh, with the rafters and the cellulose on it. Um, okay, so this is what we have done, this layer. Um, now we are going to uh, create a board. And finally, uh, those small stacks here. Let's do it. Uh, a board. Um, it can be OSB or plywood. Uh, we can create a wall or we can uh, continue with the component model in place. I'm going to create a wall. Uh, so for that wall, uh, 
I'm going to edit type and I'm going to duplicate and I'm going to call it um, indoor finish. I think I will, I will remember. And now I'm going to edit this. So here we don't have any materials. Uh, in structure, I'm going to use thermal air layer because here I'm going to use, uh, this is not cellulose. If you look at uh, that detail, we have a different insulation here. They don't specify what kind of insulation, but I'm going to use this cellulose in the G layer and uh, some rigid insulation here on this B layer, okay? So I'm going to use rigid insulation there. So I go back to this. I use rigid insulation. And uh, how many inches? Uh, I think uh, in this, we have three and a half. Uh, structural framing. No, this surface layer, okay, uh, up to three and a half. So that's what we're going to use, three and a half inches. So this is three and a half, 3.5. Now, uh, insert a new layer. I'm going to move it up out of this uh, core boundary. Uh, this is uh, finish, and um, I'm going to uh, create a uh, O. Is B. Okay, so this is uh, oriented strand board. Okay, so that's the OSB material. I'm going to upload it in my project. I'm going to apply. Okay. And what's the thickness of this board? I don't think if they specified it, it's C control layer OSB structural grid. Uh, apparently, this is uh, 7 uh, 16ths. Okay, so let's make it one half, eight, eight, eight sixteenths would be one half, and I think it's easier. So let's make it a half inch. And I need another uh, strand board uh, there too. So let's insert, uh, move it down. And that is uh, always B. And half inch. So I have created this uh, indoor finish wall, and now on level one, I'm going to uh, place it here, but I have to uh, line it up with the rafter. I can't because uh, the location is core cent center line, so I'm going to uh, finish phase interior. And now I think it will work, the lineup. Okay, I want to move it here uh, because this is the raptors, this is the cellulose, and this is my material. If you want to see the layers, you have to adjust this level of detail just fine. And here we see the layers. Okay, if we go to the 3D view, it's in the wrong place. We have this uh, nasty texture of the OSB uh, thing here, uh, but we are going to move it from level negative 10 to level one. There we go. Um, okay. And here, uh, I see the walls. Uh, then I have to divide this. I have to create parts, okay? So we will do the same thing we did for, uh, for the concrete detail. But um, I want to uh, create here like uh, something like this, okay? So I want to show you how to do uh, lines that are not uh, straight or parallel or perpendicular. So we will create parts and then we will divide the parts uh, using this criteria here. Okay, so that's the interior finish. Uh, what's the exterior finish? 
uh, for the exterior finish, uh, we have here E, F, and G. So E, it's the weather resistant barrier, uh, which is um, uh, thick wood, fiberboard, uh, pH uh, flexible dimensions, whatever. It's a flexible dimension, so uh, it can uh, change. But basically here we have another uh, wood board and uh, this is a weather resistant barrier. So what they have is a wall uh, a board like this uh, that has this uh, coating, okay? So it's a staff stuck to the board and that makes it air resistant. Mm -hmm. That it's a wooden board, uh, let's say half inch or one inch thick, it, it depends. We can uh, keep uh, using the half inch thickness and it has just a different uh, texture here. Uh, like this, okay? You see that they have this uh, orange or this bluish uh, air barrier, but it's something that it's a membrane, it's very thin. So let's use uh, the OSB board. Uh, then the F is the rain screen. So it's a drainage plane, uh, three quarters of an inch. And then we have the exterior cladding, custom. Uh, so the exterior cladding can be anything. And then this F is the rain screen. It's what we saw in this uh, picture here. That's the interior and the exterior was, where was it? Oh, excuse me. Okay, so that's the exterior and that's the rain screen. Uh, why do they call it rain screen? Because, uh, well, uh, that chamber is ventilated and these uh, elements are used to nail uh, the exterior finish. It can be vinyl or it can be uh, a wood rain screen or whatever. Uh, so we will use wood because it looks better, uh, but we have these horizontal elements. Um, and apparently they are not uh, filled with thermal insulation. We can even use thermal insulation here. It will be even better, but apparently they don't have it. So that's the board. This is the, the first uh, board that we have. And then we have uh, an air cavity. And finally we have the exterior finish. Okay, so let's do it. Um, we are going to... Well, instead of doing this here, we are going to uh, uh, do it differently. So we're going to use the component model in place. I want to use different uh, options so that you can uh, try the, the one that you like the most. Uh, so I'm going to use architecture, a component, a model in place, and this can be, okay, wall. And I'm going to create something very, uh, it's a extrusion. And uh, I'm setting the work plane on level nine, negative nine. And uh, I'm going to create a, uh, just the board uh, here, here. Uh, the thickness can be, I think it was three quarters, 0. 0.75. 0. 0.75 inches. inches and now all the way here and there you go. So now we have this, we can move it up and uh, we can edit it. Uh, let's move it up to the top. And uh, before finishing, uh, we can change the material. So we can use the OSB material as well, OSB. Okay. And now here, it's a nasty texture, okay, we have to fix it. Um, then uh, we have that uh, rain screen, okay? So the rain screen is made of horizontal elements 
So if I use the east elevation here, I have to nail uh, horizontal elements. Um, something very, okay, so let's use architecture uh, component modeling place. I'm going to use uh, walls and I'm going to use extrusion. I'm going to pick the plane, uh, but now I want to pick uh, one of those planes, okay? Either this or this or this, okay? And now um, for this, I want to create like a line. And this can be something, let's say two inches by two inches, two inches by two inches. Okay, so that's the rain screen. And then I go to the 3D view and I move it in this direction. Okay, uh, well, the material, this is wood. So I change this, I select edit in place and change the material uh, to wood. Uh, we can use this uh, soft wood. Okay. So that's it. And now how many of them do we need? Um, good question. Uh, so we need one at the beginning. Okay. And another one at the end of the... Um, uh, so what can I do? I can... If this is uh, negative six, so it's uh, nine uh, feet, six inches. Uh, so if I have one each foot, it will be uh, 10. Okay, so I'm going to uh, use another option. I'm going to select this. I'm going to select array here. And now I'm going to move it to the last. And uh, let's say uh, 12 elements. So I want to select the first point which is the lower, this uh, uh, left bottom corner of, the, of this element. And then the last point is this one. And if everything goes well, okay, nice. We have different uh, elements. They are all at the same distance. And uh, this is what I have here. I don't know how many, but yeah, it looks like something like that. Any issues with this? Yes. Uh, do you have this? Uh, okay. So I'm going to copy. So from the east elevation, I want to copy a, a certain number. I decided 12. It can be 11, 10, but I decided 12 uh, from uh, here up to the bottom of uh, of this uh, wall okay so i'm going to use the the option uh, array uh, i have to select the the element first and then with the array uh, we have different options here i can move to the second uh, or i can move to the last i select move to the last because this is the first one and this is the last one and then i have to select the number of items i want to copy i selected 12 okay and then I have to select uh, if this is the, I want the last one uh, to be at the bottom of the, of the wall. So I have to select this point because I'm going to do it wrong. I'm going to select this one and see what happens, okay? So I select this one first, uh, the, that level uh, second. So you see that we have this um, element that it's out of the wall. Okay, so I, I don't want this. So now I'm going to do it uh, well. I select this, east elevation, array. So that's why I have to select this bottom corner and then uh, move it to the last. 
12 items and uh, paste it here. And now I have the 12 elements. Okay. So that's it. That works for the exterior rain screen. But indoors, uh, we have this cavity, this B, which is the surface layer. Okay, so they call it, we always have a cavity. Uh, we have the structural um, and the thermal insulation element, this uh, 10 inches with rafters or cellulose. And then we have this, uh, they call it this cavity uh, surface layer because they, uh, if we need wires, pipes, or whatever, they use this cavity here. And for this, they have the rain screen. The rain screen is that in the event that some of water, some water uh, goes through the, the rain screen, the first exterior cladding, and then we have this rain screen, so the water stops there, so we don't affect. And the water goes down, and it can dry out. Okay, so that's the the concept of the this first cavity in so indoors. And we have something to uh, run the wires or the pipes or whatever. And here we have something to prevent water from entering the building. Um, okay, so that's the that's it. And finally, uh, here we will need the uh, the cladding, the exterior cladding. If we have all these elements, it's because we get, we have to nail uh, the exterior cladding uh, to those elements. So what this can be. Um, so if we have uh, here uh, those uh, elements like this, uh, I'm going to use uh, like uh, wood siding like that. Okay, so this is nailed uh, here, uh, this is nailed here, and then the water goes out. And this is the, the rain screen. So I'm going to use uh, those elements to nail uh, this wooden. Now they have vinyl, but they don't like it. It's like plastic, I don't know. In these modern constructions, I, I don't like it. So I'm going to use a traditional wooden uh, thing that I think is better. Uh, so how can we do it here? Um, well, I think the best uh, option is to use the component uh, model in place. Uh, let's use walls and I'm going to do something made of wood uh, so I'm going to use extrusion uh, pick a plane I'm going to pick this plane here and uh, let's uh, do it uh, okay I'm going to do this because I want to make sure that I have the right okay this is one inch Okay, uh, so this distance is important. So it's uh, the height between this point and this point, then one inch here. And then I'm going to uh, connect this point and this point. Uh, but I have to move it downwards following uh, this line up to here. Uh, we want an overlap uh, so that the water doesn't affect uh, that okay, uh, but I want this to be one inch. And now the thickness of this element is uh, one inch too. And then I move it up, make sure that it's parallel, and here. Okay, so we have one inch of uh, solid wood. Quite expensive, but I think it's worth it. And uh, before uh, finishing this, I have to uh, delete all this and click OK. And uh, before finishing, I can change the material to uh, what kind of wood uh, do we want? Do we have oak or ash, birch, cherry, oak, red, white? 
I'm not an expert on wood. Uh, so when I don't know what to say, I say, the, I say oh, it's uh, oak or pine. Okay, but there are uh, thousands of uh, trees uh, and probably uh, they are uh, red, oak red. No, let's uh, use oak white, but uh, I don't know. So maybe you find another over there option for this finish. Okay, and now on the 3D view, um, I have to move it in this direction. Okay. Uh, are we done with this? No, we are not. Uh, because we have to uh, copy this many times. So I'm going to use the array again. Um, but I'm going to use the array, but I need something for the last one because the, the last one, okay, I'll show it. Uh, we select this, uh, select array. Uh, now we need uh, to move to the last. And then how many elements uh, do we need? I need one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Okay, I'll select 11. See what happens. From this point to this point here. And okay, it did it well because that's what I wanted. Okay, so I nail this uh, to this element and this I have this overlap. So I uh, cover uh, the nail. Because every time we pierce, every time we nail uh, something, okay, so we have this element and uh, that uh, element here, and we nail it. Uh, water, uh, because if we have a nail and uh, we have a tiny hole, uh, so water uh, can uh, come here, it can corrode the nail itself, and it can, it can end up uh, affecting the wood, okay? So every time we hear something, uh, we need something and water can go to that, uh, to that hole. Uh, so I have to uh, overlap this so that water, in theory, doesn't affect this uh, wood point. Okay, so that's why we, I have uh, extended that and I have overlapped uh, this here. Um, uh, I have an issue with uh, with this, uh, but probably if we have a concrete wall here, uh, I have to fix or I have to change that uh, issue. But anyway, for that detail, it doesn't matter. But when we are working with the section itself, uh, we have to do something here at the bottom of this wall, the connection between the concrete and, and the wood itself. Okay, so we have this nice uh, detail with the rain screen. And uh, I think we have all the elements that we need. I think so. So now um, I'm going to uh, show uh, different layers, the same thing we had here. Okay, so I can either look at this from uh, inside or outside. I don't know. Uh, let's look it from inside. And then we're going to uh, divide parts and I'm going to create these uh, sections so that I can see all the material that I have in this, in this one. Uh, so let's uh, look at this from inside. And uh, well, the first thing I would do is to select this and uh, uh, create parts. If we create parts, you see that we have the OSB board, and we have the rigid insulation, and we have uh, that board here. Um, I told you that in the outdoors, I used the component modeling place, and here I have used a wall. Um, okay, uh, I don't know, maybe a component model in place is easier, but uh, let's use this. So if I want to create that uh, slice of material that uh, it's not, because if I want just a parallel element, I can use this um, 
I can select this part. I can uh, show shape handles and then I can move it down. Okay, so here you show different things. Uh, you select this one, uh, show shape handles and move it down. And for this one, uh, show shape handles and move it down. Okay, so if we keep moving this down, Here we can show all the layers. You have the first OSB, a rigid insulation. This is the OSB. This is the cellulose, rock pairs, and we have the, uh, the outdoor uh, elements there. But uh, okay, it's not bad. You can move this in this direction or move this in that direction. Okay, yeah, it's not bad. But I'm going to do something different. I'm going to uh, divide parts. So you remember that uh, we use this option for the fachade, for the real art gallery fachade. We divide it uh, in parts using uh, reference planes because we wanted to divide uh, like uh, straight lines or uh, the exterior finish into straight lines. But now I want to do like a random uh, shape. So can I do that? Yes, I can. Uh, so first, I'm going to select this OSB. I'm going to select divide parts. And uh, we can uh, select intersecting references and we can use uh, read lines or reference planes. But I can, I can uh, edit the sketch, okay? So I'm going to edit the sketch. First, I have to set uh, the work plane. Uh, I have to pick it. And I'm going to pick uh, this uh, plane here, okay? So if I hover the mouse, I select this exterior uh, layer. And now I'm going to create like a random uh, spline. So I'm going to start here and uh, I'm going to create like a line like this and enter. So just, and okay. Just make sure that uh, that line it's in the right plane, on the right plane, and it goes beyond the part that I want to divide. Uh, so if I click OK, I hope it will work. I select OK, yes. So you see that we have divided this into two different parts with this random shape. Uh, if I want to show what is uh, behind that layer, I have to select this part, uh, just hiding view, elements, and this is what Okay, so I have created this random shape and I show what is uh, behind it. Um, I can do the same with the thermal insulation. Uh, I will do it, uh, select this, uh, divide parts. Um, I'm going to edit sketch, but now I have to set uh, the work plane, pick a plane. I have to set the work plane here where the thermal insulation is. And I'm going to create another random spline starting here. Okay. And if I click okay, I click okay and I have divided this into two parts. So now I can select this, hide in view. And there you go. Finally, uh, I want to do the same thing with this one, okay? So uh, select this one, divide parts, edit sketch, uh, set the work plane, pick a plane here. Be careful because you can select this part with I, or you can select that plane, the horizontal one, or you can select uh, that plane, so I want to select uh, this one. Okay. And now I can edit sketch, another spline, and it will be, like this. Now I click okay. And I hide this in view. 
Okay. Is it necessary? I mean, I can use the shape handles, probably takes uh, less time, but uh, well, if you want to do something different, uh, you, can, you can use this, this option. Okay. Uh, but now I don't see the uh, this, but I, that was the component model in place, so I can move it up, and now I see the cellulose. In fact, I have to copy uh, this cellulose layer if I'm in level one, I can copy it here and here. Okay, so now you can see the cellulose uh, layer. And I don't know why I can't see the... That was the colors. I can see that. Okay, uh, so looking at the model, uh, now I have all these. I don't have those elements, okay? So uh, how do I do this? Uh, this is the, the cavity for the pipes and all that stuff. So I need another tiny, but in this case, we don't have horizontal elements, we have vertical elements. Uh, and those are nailed to the main raptor that we have there, okay? Um, but at the same time here, we don't have thermal insulation. We have created some thermal insulation here. Okay, so I'm going to do something even more uh, difficult. So I'm going to go to the front view. And uh, I want to create uh, like those small rafters uh, here, but I have to interrupt uh, the thermal insulation. Uh, can I do it? Yes. Uh, so I have to divide the thermal insulation into parts. So I select this, I divide this in parts, and now I'm going to edit the sketch, and I'm going to pick uh, the lines of the rafters, okay? So I'm going to pick uh, this line here, uh, this one, and this one, this one, this one, and this one. Uh, you have to go beyond uh, the part that you want to uh, create. So we have to move it uh, upwards. And then downwards. Okay, have to move it downwards. There you go. So once uh, we have divided this, we have extended uh, these lines beyond uh, the limit of the part that we want to divide. I click okay and uh, click okay again and see what happens. You see that I have divided the thermal insulation uh, here. Okay, so now I select this hiding view and this hiding view. And this one, hiding view. Okay, so you see that now I have divided uh, the thermal insulation into different parts. And I have created a space uh, for this uh, rafter. Uh, and then I fill that gap uh, with thermal insulation, but I don't have the rafter yet. Okay, so if I go to level one, I show all the layers here, I show the parts. and hiding view category. Uh, so now my rafter is this, it has this size, okay? So that's the thickness of the thermal insulation and that's the width. Uh, so I can uh, use another architecture component, model in place, uh, wall, 
and I can use extrusion and uh, I set the work plane on level negative nine together. And now as a rectangle, I do this and finish. Now on the 3D view, where the hell is that? It's here. Okay, and I have to move it up. And this is the rafter. Yep. Now I can uh, change the material. Okay, that is uh, wood. Uh, the soft, uh, soft wood. And now I can copy uh, this element. Uh, here, here, and there. So every time I change this, there is like an issue with the visibility. Okay, so this is it. I have created, uh, well, I have done a lot of things. Okay, uh, probably there's a way to do it, uh, easier way to do it, I don't know, maybe. Uh, but I think here uh, I have all the layers. I have the, the external uh, layer. I have here the thermal insulation. Uh, this is the cavity. It can be empty, but if we want uh, the R53, we have to fill this gap with thermal insulation. Then we have those uh, rafters uh, that I can perforate uh, because those are not structural elements. So if I need to go, if I need to pass a uh, pipe or wires, uh, I can do it because they are nailed to the structural elements. So if I need even to break them, I can. Uh, and then I nail the OSB board, the interior finish, it can be the board or it can be the gypsum or whatever, uh, to these uh, rafters here. Then I have another layer of uh, cellulose. And uh, here, if you want to keep showing different things, uh, you remember that I created this uh, with a model in place. So we can do that. And here we can show the uh, uh, the rafters. And even if we want to show uh, the okay, when we create an array of elements, you see that uh, that element belongs to the group. If I ungroup it, now this element is just a single element and I can show it that way. Okay, so if I want to show uh, those, um, line up the rain screen, I can show it. And the same thing with, uh, with this, you can ungroup it, and then you can show uh, different elements here. Okay, but I think it's a cool way to define a wall uh, with all the uh, layers uh, from the interior finish. Well, usually we don't have this finish. We don't have uh, the OSB or maybe we do. But uh, if you want um, a painting, uh, you can just uh, create another layer, another very thin layer with this uh, painting and add some color or that, well, that is not, uh, rather. Okay, so we have all the layers here. Uh, then uh, how can we uh, prepare uh, our uh, sheet, our specification sheet? Uh, the same, I will, I think I added, where is the unvented group? Yeah, so you remember, so I made a terrible mistake. Uh, so I selected this 3D view, uh, and then I have moved this, I have changed the, the crop region, 
and uh, now it uh, God knows uh, where oh, it's here. Okay. Um, so every time you do something, you have to duplicate uh, the three view. Okay, so I'm going to try to fix uh, what I did wrong. So I'm going to again insert uh, this here. And uh, I don't want to show the hidden. Uh, and if I go here, And on this 3D view, I want to uh, crop and I'm going to uh, rename it. So I'm going to duplicate view and this is uh, 3D uh, uh, roof. Three D roof. Uh, so when I am uh, defining this, uh, a roof, unbended roof, then I can uh, drag this 3D roof here and it's in the right place, okay? Uh, by the way, I told you uh, this, uh, you can always, if you want to get rid of this uh, title block, uh, you can always uh, edit type and uh, you don't want to show extension line and you don't want to show a uh, title and uh, now you're not showing it. Um, well, I have to get rid of the level, but uh, I'll do it later. Okay, let's do it. Let's go to 3D roof. No, uh, because that was, uh, what was that? Okay, that was the south elevation. I should have done the same with the south elevation. Okay, so I'm going to duplicate this. So this is a south elevation. Uh, south uh, roof unvented. So if you create different details for for this, and where, where, where is we go? Hmm? Oh, uh, because okay, I'll show the crop region. So now it's here. Okay. Uh, crop view. Get rid of level. And uh, go back to the unvented roof and uh, get rid of this. And add the roof and then it. Oh, sorry. Because on the south elevation. Um, okay, so I can't do it again. So this is uh, south roof. No, I have to uh, insert this south elevation um, because all these uh, elements, they were detailed uh, components. So they are not in the 3D view Yeah. So now I have to go to this one and uh, drag again the south elevation here. Okay, so this one, the uh, south uh, roof unvented, uh, that would be the south uh, wall. Uh, so in this south wall,
Well, actually, it's not south. It will be east. Yeah. So now you have to uh, create the 2D detail. I told you that I was not going to do it. Okay, but uh, the new uh, sheet, uh, we will have the 3D. If we are here, now I have to duplicate that name, duplicate view uh, to 3D, uh, 3D wall. This 3D wall, I have to hide all the things that I don't want to show. I have to uh, show the crop region and I have to change the crop region to fit the wall detail. And now if I create a new sheet, um, uh, on that new sheet, I have to drag the 3D wall, but I have to crop view and I have to hide the crop region. And now on this new one, I can drag the 3D wall. Here. Uh, maybe the scale is too big, uh, one, one half. Or three quarters. I think three quarters uh, go well. Uh, so you have space here. You have to define the section here. And um, I think uh, this is a nice way to do it. Uh, once you have the section, you can have this A, B, C, D, and then you have to copy all this text. I can annotate a text and you can copy here. There you go. Okay, so that would be the the final uh, presentation. Here we have the wall. Uh, you would need here. Uh, you need the section, and here you can copy all the layers. Uh, but you need the same section here. But you have to improve this detail. Okay, so well improve it. Uh, use the same colors that we have used for uh, for the roof. Uh, so we have the uh, the board and all that stuff. Okay, but that's the 3D view. Uh, here you need a section of the detail uh, with all the or with all these letters, and you need this legend. And now we have the unvented roof, and this is the wall detail. Okay, so you were uh, last week, uh, you were supposed to uh, work on the unvented and the vented roof. So you need uh, two sheets here unvented roof, uh, vented roof, both of them, both of them. And uh, now you have to add uh, the wall detail. And, um, but the section, it's up to you. So I'm not going to do it here. 